uh, it's better than that is bad. I'm just going to be white in my head. So, the Lord heals me. So, you're my family. And I told my own my immediate family, you believe with me. God's going to heal.
Cook books will be in soon also, so if you've not bought one, be on the lookout for those because they have been a lot of work in them. We've got about 200 that we've got to sell, so I hope y'all like the cook. <coughs> y'all forget that, remember that. Our brothers are going to come and we're going to take our last conference this morning. Let's rejoice in our giving today.
we'll do our offering for the, uh, for the building up there. And uh, we've got some good ideas. <laughs> we need some, some light workers to kind of uh, get these things done. And some more money to be able to buy for you and do the cabinets and all things like this. But uh, we've got a good space. Uh, we'll take three other rooms and put them together. And uh, we'll make a fellowship hall that can see us all.
being here today. And God has so much more. How many, how many of you really thank God that not only He is so much more, but He has more yes, yeah. in store? Amen. Amen. We feel like we're right on the brink of just something that has never happened. I know He's dealing with my heart in area that I have. We can get in such a routine. How many can say amen? amen. amen. Yeah. amen. We just thank you going. We meet on Sunday morning, Wednesday Bible study, Sunday morning, and Monday evening, and Thursday, and kind of go through that. And sometimes it seems like we may get in some kind of a God wants us to move us. He wants us to kind of awaken. I want us to look at Deuteronomy chapter 28. While you're turning there, I want to read in chapter 2. If you turn to 28, Talk about God's blessings, and He has so much more in store than what we're experiencing right now. I just feel that urgency. But in chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, He said, Then we turned and took our journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea, as the Lord spake unto me, and we compassed Mount Seir many days. Say, many days. Yeah. And the Lord spake unto me, saying, Ye have compassed this mountain, Long enough. Say long enough. Long enough. Long enough. You have compassed this mountain long enough. Turn you northward. That's what I heard in my spirit early this morning. You went around this place so long and so long and the same thing going on. He says it's time to turn northward. And I'm talking about this way. Amen. I know we're in the middle of the you know, presidential year, but I want you to know that he is our king, right? Yeah. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, 
and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. <laughs> the Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Say hallelujah. Galatians 
chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. We're coming up to Easter, and the greatest time of the year as far as I'm concerned, not only because springtime is here, hallelujah, but because of what Jesus Christ did. In Galatians 3, 13 and 14, Christ hath, hath, hath redeemed us. How many knows he already has? Redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. How many believes he hung on the tree for us? Yes. How many believes he yes. hung and became a curse for us that we can receive God's blessings? Amen. He stood in our place. It should have been us hanging on the cross. Amen. But Jesus came and he took it on the nature of man and he stood in the gap between heaven and hell and he took our place on the cross. Whoa.
Son did not hide in all that's the promise. That the Spirit of God, His blessing, be on our life. Aren't you glad we got the Holy Ghost in our life? Aren't you glad He's not somebody that just make us jump a pew and run down an aisle? Chill, run them down our spine. That's great and hallelujah, but most of the time I'm not feeling any of that stuff. But yet I still know that God's Spirit is living in me. Can I get a witness? The Holy Ghost is living in our life. Why? Because if we have the fruit of the Spirit, it's not necessarily just showing emotion. And it will do that. If you get in 220 volts in water, you're going to show some emotion, right? When you get in the power of God, you will show some emotion. But the thing that He's, the fruit of the Spirit, that's, that's one thing that proves you spirit filled, right? You have peace, love, joy, compassion. Right. Amen. Yeah. You're not mean in a junkyard dog and slap your wife and pet your dog and, and I'm full of the Holy Ghost. How many of you ever saw those people? Yeah. Man, they're just happy for the Lord. You do something across them and <coughs> y'all know what happens. Yeah. Y'all know what happens, right? But can I tell you, being spirit-filled, people's going to know that. How many of you believe it? Yeah. How many believe you're treating people right if you're yeah. full of the Spirit? Yeah. How many believe that you will love them, not because yeah. I can love them, but because they do what I want them to do? Because God is love. Amen. Yeah. 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 You know, I don't think he talks behind people's back. I don't yeah. think they're up there at the throne they say, can you believe that? <laughs> I mean, I can't picture that happening. Can you believe they did this or they, they did that? You know what? He is longing for a relationship with you. That's what he's longing for. He's longing for us to know him and the power of the resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering. He wants he want us to become like him. And that don't happen when, when I get saved. When I got saved January 5th, 1900, somewhere. When I got saved, you know, everything in my life just wasn't completely. I still thought the way that I always thought. How many knows it's a process? Yeah. Your mind don't get born again, right? It's got to get renewed. It's got to get transformed. It's got to get changed. And that's the process that we spend all our life. And how many know I want to go through that, don't you? Yeah. And I said I want to go through the change. I want to go through what God is doing in our life. And it is a process. It's not going to happen immediately. We don't know how to do it all. Now, I'm not saying that we did everything wrong over there, but I'm saying that there is more to being full of the Spirit than just what, you know, in church. Can I tell you, being Spirit-filled means a whole lot when you're out there. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? And I've said this, I don't know how many times, if you step on a jelly donut, Somebody tell me what's going to come out. Yeah. If we're spirit filled, if we're full of the Holy Ghost, and somebody steps on us, or they rub us the wrong way, what's going to come out? Anger? Being hateful? Being mean? And I don't mean being so great, you're just walking around smiling all the time. I remember years ago, a girl that used to, when everybody used to groove back in the 60s, 70s, Every time you see her walking, she'd just be smiling. Nobody even around her. I'm like, something's wrong with her. People just don't smile for no reason. But you know, when you're full of the joy of God, it's going to show in your life. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 So we want to be full of this Spirit. Look what Jesus said, John 16, verses 13, 15. How big when He, 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 the Spirit of truth, has come, He will, listen, guide you. How many need a guide? I mean, if I didn't have a GPS, and then Barbara's getting older, she's not helping me get around me. We had to go to Lexington to, to see the doctor, and I, we get out to the, the uh, Lexington Clinic and the complex, and there's building A, B, C, D, and she said, it's in building C. So we see building D, and I'm driving around, I said, it ain't over here. Well, it's got to be over here somewhere. It's in building C, and I mean, you're right there where it's at, even the GPS, which we didn't use this time. Well, say you have arrived at your destination. You're like, well, where's the destination at? It's not here. But aren't you glad the Spirit of God is our God? When we get in trouble, I don't have to call somebody, but I have to call on Him. He is the one that's going to lead us and direct us. Amen? Amen. He will be with God and 
took all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, hallelujah, the witness of the Spirit, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. How many I believe he wants us to know about him. I don't think he'd want to be all this mystery that we just can't understand anything about, you know, anything. I've heard how many people say, I just don't understand the Bible. I don't know how many people. I just, I just can't read the Bible. Can I tell you, if you don't read the Bible, you're going to be defeated. Is that, is that a problem? You're not, if you don't read the blueprint and the guide, you're not going to know when the enemy comes in like a flood that God's going to raise up the standard against him. But if you know that you're placed in the field and, and in the city and in the country and coming in and going out, if you know regardless come hell or hot water that you're placed, how many of you can take a stand? Yes. Well, they may be coming against me, but the Bible says, I am blessed. If I do what he says to do, right? If you're living like the devil and quote the scripture, it's not going to help you. Right. Are you here? Right. If you live like the devil all week and come to church on Sunday and say, I believe the Bible says, well, if you observe and do, yes. he said, I will. Amen? Yes. How many glad for that? Yes. <laughs> I mean, I can't even understand that. We've got to walk with him. Romans 8, 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. How many are led by the Spirit of God? How many are led by the Spirit of God? Here's what I've learned, and I'm a very slow learner. If I'm not getting any direction to go anywhere, how many know I'm not going to go anywhere? If the cloud didn't get up and move, or the fire by night that led the children of Israel in the wilderness for 40 years, they camped right where that cloud landed, right? They didn't get up and say, man, I just don't feel nothing here. Let's move over here. Well, there's nothing going on over here. Let's, let's go down this way. You didn't move. You didn't get up from camp until the presence of God led you. How many of you have been led by the Spirit of God? Can I tell you, being led by the Spirit of God, you're not going to see everything, baby the way that you think it should be. That's why the word of the Lord is a lamp into our feet and a light into our path. That, that's, you know, if we're walking with it, we're going to see where to take the next step. But we're not going to see my five-year plan. Because in five years, hallelujah, we may be rejoicing around the streets of gold, right? In five years, well, we don't know what's going to be, but we know, and I need to know where to step right now. His word Say it, his word yeah. is a lamp unto my feet. To my feet. We're up standing, and he's alive into my path. He's letting us, he's given us and leading us, giving us direction. How I many is glad for his word? Yeah. You can grow up in church, and you can hear, you know, somebody preach every time the door's open. But if you don't read it for yourself, it's got to be alive for yourself. I said it's got to come alive. It's got to be a rhema word for right now for you. And we know the word of the Lord is what? It's alive, it's quick, powerful, and then two it sword piercing to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, the turn of the thoughts and intents of the heart. He knows where we are. So look at your neighbor and say, don't worry. Don't worry. It don't matter who gets selected. <laughs> Preaching to myself. It don't matter what's going on. Here's what I want you to know. God will give us whatever we desire and what we want. Right? I mean, we read that in the Bible. You desire something bad long enough, He'll turn you over to do whatever you want to do. Right? And how many want to desire Him? How many want to please Him? See, because He's moving us. I'm tired of going around the mountain. I'm tired of compassing the mountain. I want to go into the promises of God, right? Yeah. We can read how that when in, in Joshua, there's an illustration, I'm not going to get into that, but legally, when we got saved, all the promises is ours. But we got to learn how to walk in those promises. And that's why sanctification is being sanctified, right? Going from one place to other place, from glory to glory in Him. I want to
keep moving, don't you? Yes. Come on, now see your hand, both hands, both feet. I want to move into the promises, into the areas that I have never experienced before in here because there's much, much more than what we're having right now. Yeah. You know that. I said there's more than what we're experiencing right now.
talk about it. God, we said, look in prayer, and uh, we'll put it in a hush. Uh, if you look at Daniel, there's a couple of people in the entire Bible, and of course, we talked about this last Thursday night, that the Bible doesn't say anything bad about it. I'm sure they're saying no king, and that's Daniel and Joseph. The Bible doesn't say anything negative about anyone. We were talking about the things that, 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 that those guys had in common. You know, they were both taken at a young age. They were both basically kidnapped or having a good, they were carried out into the country. That, that they weren't from. They had nothing to do with the God that they served. But yeah, now think about that. If you would be carried out from here, into a world that's out there that has nothing to do with God. I go back to Daniel, and I think verse 8 of chapter 1 says, And Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the king's meat, the king's drink, the king's corpse, basically. But Daniel purposed that in his heart. Now, I'm going to tell you from experience, if you don't purpose something in your heart, you're going to fail miserably. Now, my preach to you this morning about the Word. And without it, mm, you're just another dead person. I'm sorry. This is life. This is life. This is faith. This is grace. This is everything that you need. And then come together and grow as one. But I'm telling you, that stirs me up when you don't, when you look at, at, at what's going on in our church today, the revival spirit, yeah. people actually, uh, their words and their deeds mean, <laughs> they're the same, you know, it's not that their words is one thing and their actions and deeds are something else, you know, because that's not purposing in your heart, but if you'll purpose it in your heart to read it, if you'll be a doer, not like James said, just to hear it on the word of the word. Then your life, all those blessings that Michael read to us this morning, all of them are true. Yeah. They're all applicable yeah. to your life. Yeah. But when you don't keep this commandment, then all the curses <laughs> follow. That's just the way it is. You know, I love the Lord. He is my life. He is my God. He's yeah. my strength. He's everything. Yeah. And everywhere I put my feet is blessed. Not because of me, but what's willing to me is yeah. yes, every place I put my feet. Everything I come in contact with, when I leave it, it's better. It has nothing to do with me. Right. It's the Spirit of the Lord that lives in me. Yeah. And it's the promises of His Word that everywhere I go, I'm blessed. Yeah.
Anybody else?